Now we're ready to start putting the chassis together. First we're going to mount the pan hard onto the driver's side and that's where our blue painter's tape comes into play. I'm going to take off a couple sections of these to help make assembly a lot easier. You can use any type of tape, whether it's scotch tape, masking tape, painter's tape. I wouldn't use duct tape, that stuff can get real sticky. But this will make assembly a lot easier. I'm going to put this on the back side, like so, and line it up with the edge there. I'm going to take our hardware, and I'm going to drop a nylock nut into this T-slot here for assembly. That way the, paint, the painter's tape holds it in place and you don't have to worry about it going rogue. I'm going to take a 10 mil screw and get this guy mounted to the driver's side chassis rail. Here you're going to take it, wiggle it in there just about right. The two tabs are seated in the slot and then we're going to take the 10 mil screw, run it in here, and secure the pan hard. Take the painter's tape off, and then set that aside, and we're ready to get the transmission set up. First thing we're going to do to make assembly easy is put the motor into the motor plate for the transmission. With the transmission hardware, you've got two six mil screws. We're going to use that to attach the motor to the motor plate. Like so. Pinion gear situated on the motor shaft and use the 1.5 driver to get it right there. And then we'll take another six mil screw and drop it into the motor. Going to crank these guys down like so and then we are going to apply some painters tape to the motor plate so we can seat our screws in there. I'm going to tuck on the spur side I'm going to tuck this in there just a little bit press down on it and fold it back just so it doesn't get caught in the chassis while I'm assembling this motor plate to the chassis rails. I'm going to drop our screw or excuse me, drop our nuts into our T-slots, pressing firmly on there so the tape grabs a hold of it. Sometimes like so. All right. Now this guy is ready to get installed into the chassis rail. So we're going to start on the driver's side like so and then run a 10 mil screw into here. I'm holding on to the nylock nut to make sure it doesn't cross thread and then we're just going to snug it down. We're not going to go full tight yet. Okay. Now this is where we jump back to the servo winch mount because we're going to put everything together on one side and then put the other chassis rail together so we're not trying to squeeze anything in there. I'm going to put the painters tape on the bottom half, on the bottom side of the servo winch mount. Flip that over. The servo winch mount is directional. The front side of it, or the front half of it, is more narrow than the rear, or the piece that's closest to the spur gear now. So make sure that you check those measurements. The smallest piece, the smallest side, goes towards the front of the chassis. I'm going to take some more nylock nuts here, drop those into the slot, and there you have that. There. This long tab will slot into the chassis rail. Take two 10 mil screws, get started on the front, holding the nylock nut with my thumb and finger, just tight enough so it's not too crazy tight, just so we have room to move stuff around if necessary. Now we can start taking off our tape so it's not in the way. Save that for later. Now we can start working on the other side of the chassis. So we're going to take the passenger side of the chassis, make sure that this tape is folded away, and first we're going to run a screw into the motor plate, like so. 
Okay. Take our two mil driver. Make sure that screw is running into that nine lock nut just right so it's not cross threading. Just tight enough. There we go. Pop that tape off so it doesn't get in the way. And we'll continue to finish up the servo winch mount. Make sure that tab tabs right into that slot. Like so. Let's go ahead and take the tape off. Save that for later. And we're going to check the front end, make sure it's nice and snug, make all the make sure all the nuts are tight in their T-pockets, and let's drive all these home. We're going to go to the rear brace here to make it easier to install the skid plate. We're going to put our tape on the bottom side of the rear brace, like so. Okay, I put the paint painter's tape on the bottom side so I can see what I got going on. The smaller tab will go towards the front, the larger tab will go to the rear. We'll set it into the passenger side and then key in the driver's side. Take six of the 10 mil screws and just work your way down or work your way back. Finish these off, get them cranked down hard, and we'll remove our painter's tape. And that's all we need for painter's tape, or it should be all we need for the painter's tape. Now we're ready to get the T-case and skid plate into the chassis. So the T-case will be situated on the passenger side, so we're going to install it like so. Now this is where putting the brace in the rear makes it easy, because now this guy is pinched in there, nice and firm. Oh, it's also slick. Okay, and then we're going to take four of the 40 mil screws and run those all the way home. I'm going to use a driver for this guy because that's a lot of turning. Oops. The skid plate on the second hole in from the front in the skid plate area. The third hole is where you put the other screw in. So. We'll flip that guy over here and finish this off. We'll get this one seated here. Like so. Okay. Lastly, we're going to take the slave shaft here. You can take any of these red collars. There's some scale looking ones. There's some non-scale looking ones. I like to use just these simple ones here. Find the side of the yoke that has the threads for our set pins and set that guy in there. We'll spin this around. Oops. Get that guy on there. Drop this screw pin in there, like so. Take our 1.5 driver. Like so. Run that guy home onto the output shaft of the transmission. Then we will go to the top gear or top input shaft here to get the overdrive. Take the last screw pin, get that lined up, and then run it home. Like so. But there you have it folks. This is the Game Changer 4.2, Stage 2 and 3 with the double T transmission and TK setup. If you guys have any questions, comments, or concerns, please list them in the comments section of this video and I will get to them as soon as possible. Thanks for watching, guys. Aloha.